Hi kids! Today we will learn about soil erosion. So let's start! Before we can learn what is soil erosion, first we should know how is soil formed. Soil is made up of organic and inorganic materials. Let's first see from where does this inorganic material come. Inorganic material in the soil comprises of minerals, salts, and particles of sand, clay, or silt. And we know whether it's sand, clay, or silt, all are rock particles. A lot of many forces like ocean waves, rainwater, flow of rivers, Growing of plant roots in the soil breaks the small pieces of rocks that then becomes part of the soil. And this breaking of small pieces of rocks is called as weathering of rocks. Minerals and salts present in the soil also were once part of big rocks. They are dissolved by the forces of water and becomes part of the soil. So all the inorganic material in the soil comes from the weathering of rocks, that is, breaking of small pieces of rocks. You know all plants need these minerals from soil to grow. Other component of soil is the organic material, which is the remains of living things like plant remains, fallen leaves, twigs, stems, throw away or fallen fruits and vegetables and seeds. Animal remains, dead animals, small or big, dead insects or other animals. So remains of living things decay and become part of the soil. These organic remains form the nutrients that are required by plants to grow. So kids, soil is a mix of organic and inorganic material and which is mainly formed by weathering of big or small rocks and decaying of dead plants and animal remains. Process of soil creation is very, very slow. It takes hundreds of years to make top layer of soil which is fertile or supports plant growth. Now let's learn what is soil erosion. When the soil is subjected to natural and man-made forces that washes away the top fertile layer of soil, it is known as soil erosion. Soil erosion makes the soil unsuitable for cultivation. Loose and dry soil with no vegetation is more prone to soil erosion. As roots of the plants hold the soil firmly and hold it in place against the force of wind and water. So, the land with no or less vegetation is more prone to soil erosion. Now let's learn some major factors responsible for soil erosion. Heavy winds and heavy rain leads to washing away of top layer of soil that leads to soil erosion. Human settlements and civilization. Humans, that is, we, are the biggest factor responsible for soil erosion. Construction of new buildings, houses, roads, and lakes leads to the damage of top layer of soil. Even some practices of farming or cultivation too damages the top layer of soil. Human needs are ever growing and new lands are being cleared up at an unprecedented rate to make more and more buildings which is all leading to damage the top layer of the soil. Deforestation Humans are cutting more and more trees for clearing land for their purposes like farming or making new buildings. Overgrazing Animals grazing too leads to soil erosion 
as animals eat away the plants that protect soil from erosion. Gardening. Even we overwater our gardens, and that too leads to soil erosion. Forest fires. Forest fires too lead to erosion of topsoil. Overcropping. Repeatedly growing same crops on same land deplete the soil of its minerals and salt that make the soil infertile. Tilling of soil. Farmer removes all the plants from farm which is called tilling that makes the soil prone to erosion. During rain and storms, as there are no plants on land at that time to hold soil in place. Now let's see the effects of soil erosion. First of all, it degrades the quality of soil, making it less fertile and not fertile at all. Causes huge loss to farmers as there is much less yield of crops from same land. If its top layer is eroded, it harms human health. Eroded land is required to be added with a lot of chemical fertilizers in order to grow crops, which ultimately becomes part of the crop and human diet and affects our health. Water with eroded soil and chemicals reaches water bodies and there too it pollutes the water bodies. It also has adverse effects on aquatic flora and fauna. The eroded soil ultimately reaches the water bodies and accumulates there, leading to increase in water turbidity. An increased turbidity does not let much light enter the water, and aquatic flora needs light for photosynthesis. Soil that reach water bodies is also rich in nutrients, such as phosphorus and nitrogen which leads to excessive growth of algae. And algae decreases the amount of oxygen in water body that leads to death of aquatic fauna. Soil erosion also causes respiratory problems. Eroded soil with wind causes respiratory problems as we inhale it. Soil erosion harms the natural environment and we must try our best to protect the soil from soil erosion. And we will learn how we can prevent soil erosion in our next assignment. Now go ahead and take a quiz to learn more. Bye bye Tootway has thousands of animated videos on math, English, and science to clear the core basics of these subjects.